Welcome back to the Helios Technology Challenge podcast series. NASA feels that it would be a great idea to get involved with the general public and the maker spaces. And so next, let's hear about the Helios Technology Challenge that we are inviting the maker spaces to participate in. Helios participants. My name is Jay Hombeck and I'm a mechanical engineer here at NASA. We're here in the Marshall Space Flight Center 3D printing lab with our technical expert Ken Cooper. Ken, how are you doing today? Doing great, Jay. In a moment, Ken's going to run us through some 3D printing uh, additive manufacturing equipment that we have here and uh, tell us a little bit how it's going to be utilized in space in the future. Extrusion melt modeling is one of the simplest 3D printing technologies available, and it's actually the one we're looking at first to put on space station. As you can see, it's basically a modified hot glue gun on a gantry. It squirts out plastic from a spool of material that looks like weed trimmer line. This would be a great process for recycling the uh, astronaut's food packaging, for example, because it would be easily extruded into a plastic rod that we could then print out into a part. Electron beam melting is another example of 3D printing. This one takes it to the next level. You need a lot of energy and a lot of mass to be able to melt metals. In this case, we're using metal powders, titanium, that gets uh, fused together with an electron beam. This would work well on a lunar surface or a Martian surface for printing up full, dense parts. If we're gonna use it in space, like on a spacecraft to Mars, we would need like a wire feed system. Um, not unlike the kind used at the NASA Langley facility up in uh, Hampton, Virginia. So Ken, tell us a little bit about what you see NASA printing uh, in space in the future. Sure thing, Jay. Um, it could be anything as simple as a, a little drain plug that they've lost, and oops, guess what? We don't have a spare for it. Now you could 3D print that in just a few minutes right. and be replaced, as opposed to a resupply ship. It might take months to get there, if at all. Right. Um, that's a simple case of what a 3D printer can do. 3D printers can also be very complex. So you maybe you have a piece of moving, rotating machinery. You can build that all in one piece with a 3D printer as well. Um, these are the kind of things we can do here in the Marshall Lab. Take it to the next level, besides plastics. What if you need something in metal? We could do a tool a, or something. A tool, yeah. It's, com it's a complicated piece, but it's also a full strength metal part. It's oh, all 3D printed. That's pretty neat. So, like if we were doing an EVA and all of a sudden, whoops, the tool flies off, goes in off space, in space. We'll can... be able to print another crescent res or something that we need yeah. to do an EVA. That's the kind of thing you can't plan for. But no matter how many spare parts you can. Exactly. That's pretty neat. Thank you. I know you've flown a 3D printer in space on a, a zero-G plane. Tell us a little bit about the issues you had uh, in zero-G atmosphere with the 3D printer. Sure thing, Jay. Um, we, we flew a process called fused deposition. It's basically a hot glue gun on a gantry. It prints plastic parts from a filament while it moves, kind of like you see here. Um, the biggest problems we had, the limitation of the zero-G flight. You only get about 25 seconds of fall time before the, the 3G pull-out. And so kind of got this zero G and then a bunch of G at one time going back and forth. So I had physically had to sit in front of the machine and pause it for those drops. Wow. And uh, we saw, since it was the plastic was still kind of soft, it was sort of sag during those parts. Other than that, it would try to back up a little bit in the nozzles. So that's some development that's got to be done. Once we get a machine on the ISS, it's like, how do we redesign those a little bit to get it not to back up just due to the floating of liquid. Um, but yeah, we were able to build several successful parts in the hour of zero-G time that we had. So knowing that, with the, the, your experience with zero-G and all that zero-G playing, what do you think is keeping the 3D printing grounded here on, on uh, Earth? Why not in space yet? Primarily it's weight. I mean, the machines are heavy. I mean, they can be as big as this one, uh, or as, as small as you want. But um, at the time, especially when we were flying, they were really heavy machines. So you got to have a payoff of you got to be able to build more parts that weigh more than the machine itself, right. or else you can just take that many parts right. and make cut. So what about the, the weight of the printing media itself? Is it, is it pretty heavy? Is it light? That's the next level. I mean, it's going to be, it's, it's pretty dense material that you're depositing. You want to, you want a fully strength part. Right. So if it's plastic or if it's metal, it's really going to be really heavy. So you want to get the most use out of your medium 
that's where we start having to start live off the land, so to speak, yeah. and use materials that we were intended for something else. Right. We saw yeah, green since, green. since this takes up a lot of volume up there, is there anything we could actually recycle that's already up above for the uh, transportation ships up there? Well, think about it. I mean, there's lots of material that get thrown away. I mean, like a food wrapper, for example. Yeah, from yeah. astronaut's food or something. Yeah, yeah from that food. I mean, they're plastic. So why not reuse that stock to build things out of it? Yeah. Or perhaps even an old part in the case of metals. If you've got a broken part, perhaps grind right. that up and rebuild an experiment part. rack or something that's uh, that's been used and it's already done. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you have no more use for it. You totally farm uh, those out. I see that you got here a, a ISS trash can. This is actually one of the quarter racks off the ISS. Yep. Uh, run us a little bit through what kind of contents in here you see us recycling. So you never know what you're going to find when you're digging a trash can. <laughs> but, Just uh, like here on Earth. You know, it could be a sweet and sour chicken, but you know, it's a nice uh, high density polyethylene packaging. Yeah. So you can be remelted and extruded yeah. to make a part. Okay. So perhaps you need a seal for your uh, air filtration system. Yeah. There you go. There's some, some build stock. Okay, what there. else you got in there? Um, we've also got, oh my, what could this be? Some hot and sour soup. As you can see, this is a foil-like packaging. Is this leftover from last night? Well, you never know. <laughs> I don't think I would try. Yeah. But um, but since it's a foil, you know, it's aluminum based. So yeah. perhaps you make a, an aluminum crush ship or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you might be able to create some kind of parts like this up there. You never know. Uh, anything like that. You might be able to melt it down, whatnot, create something else, repurpose it really. Absolutely. Yeah. This is the uh, same material that's made out of uh, MREs are made out of, uh, like during Hurricane Katrina. Uh, FEMO's passing these out to everybody. Uh, this is definitely something that could be repurposed for something else sure. that takes up space and it's really heavy. Otherwise, so, it would just be trash. Exactly. And that takes up volume. So, thank you for that idea. So, an astronaut's trash is my build stock. There you go. <laughs>that leads us to our Helios Tech Challenge. As you can see in here in the lab behind me, uh, Ken's lab over here at Marshall Space Flight Center, 3D printing definitely has a lot of uses here on Earth, from printing out rocket parts to, for the, our transportation vehicles, uh, all the way to uh, many uses in space, like printing out extra tools, uh, extra parts, like these drains right here. Uh, so we're gonna have to get creative, and how to figure out a way how to get 3D printing in space, since it's so heavy. That's right, Jay, and so the challenge to you guys is turn this astronaut trash into some filament feedstock that I can use to make parts. Right. We can uh, bail us out in an emergency situation right? or to build up infrastructure ahead of us. Right, and also reducing the volume of this trash will actually help us uh, with other things. So that's our challenge to you guys. We look forward to hearing from you. Uh, also, check out our website and learn more information because, you know, the hard part is not printing the 3D printing stuff. It, the hard part is actually learning how to use this stuff effectively and repurposing things for better pur or more purposes in the future. Do you think they actually need any of this stuff? Yeah, I don't know. These kind of look like leftovers from last night. <laughs> you want some? No. no, no.